Being Jeffrey's agent, it feels like a lifetime, but in fact it's about 15 years, although I'd known him for about 25 years. He phones at about 7.45 every morning, and uh, if I don't answer the phone, he leaves a message. I just want you to phone me back immediately with the name of a decent agent. And I always think that's a good way of starting the day. Jeffrey is demanding and professional. But the reason why one takes it is because he is the most demanding of himself. Uh, he uh, believes that everything he does has to be done in the most professional way, and he expects that of all the people who work with him. I think that the only thing an agent has to offer, apart from their experience, uh, is their time and the need to care about the author's work and about the author as a person. It's a friendship uh, and it's a, it's a professional duty. So those are the attributes which I think are important. I love it. I'm the last person to see the manuscript before it goes off design and typesetting. So I'm looking for everything that might be wrong with it, basically. So that includes the, the basics of copy editing, which are looking for spelling and punctuation, grammar, lack of clarity, anything like that, but also any holes there might be in the plot because the Chronicles have their own world and it's the facts within the Chronicles and now as we're building up book after book after book that this is, I'm having to back check. Because Geoffrey writes in the moment, he can sometimes forget something else that he's written. So with volume four of the Clifton Chronicles, I noticed that he had brought back to life one of the butlers. And I pointed it out to him, and he'd quite forgotten that he killed him off. So then I get the sort of steely-eyed glare that says, when did he says to me, I want solutions, not problems. So I'd suggest something that might solve that particular plot hole. And he says something to me like, his latest thing actually is to say to me, clomp, 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 because he thinks I'm being very pedestrian and boring and then a light goes on in his eyes because he's just had an idea. So he turns over a page of his manuscript and he starts writing. And I look out the window at the Houses of Parliament for a while and then he hands me back a piece of paper and there'll be a couple of sentences and usually he's nailed it. He's usually nailed the problem there. We've got a fix and then we can move on to the next one. He is extraordinarily successful, uh, and yet one's still only scratching the surface because you can be number one in every country in the world, you can sell 280 million copies of your books, and still people stop him in the street and say, Geoffrey, what are you doing? Have you written a book recently? Uh, and that half annoys him, but half stimulates him to do even better.